The Right Honourable Sir Winston Leonard Spencer Churchill, was a British statesman, best known as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom during the Second World War. At various times a soldier, journalist, author, and politician, Churchill is generally regarded as one of the most important leaders in British and world history. Considered reactionary on some issues, such as granting independence to Britain's colonies and at times regarded as a self-promoter who changed political parties to further his career, it was his wartime leadership that earned him iconic status. Some of his peacetime decisions, such as restoring the gold standard in 1924, were disastrous as was his World War I decision to land troops on the Dardanelles. However, during 1940, when Britain alone opposed Hitler's Nazi Germany in the free world, his stirring speeches inspired, motivated, and uplifted a whole people during their darkest hour. Churchill saw himself as a champion of democracy against tyranny, and was profoundly aware of his own role and destiny. More than three hours a day. The study was published in the Archives of Disease in Childhood. Researchers studied more than 11,000 British children ages 5 to 7. Parents completed a questionnaire about the strengths and weaknesses of their kids, and they were also asked to report how much time their children spend watching television. Researchers say those who watch more are more likely to steal or fight by age 7. Then again, they say the overall likelihood of that antisocial behavior is pretty low. And a writer for The Atlantic says the risks discovered are not significant. They fail to look at the content of the shows and games occupying their subjects' time. And all things considered, a mother and blogger for Mother Nature Network says the real danger of too much TV is obesity. And on WLNY, anchors pointed out mobile devices seem to make it easier to give kids TV to watch. I know it can be challenging. And look, you see people in restaurants now all the time the throwing iPad. TV shows on the mm -hmm. iPad, on the mm -hmm. phone to keep kids, you know, occupied. Just maybe watch the clock, too. Interestingly enough, the researchers said they found no link between computer and electronic games and antisocial behavior. And the experts say, bottom line, it's a good rule of thumb to try to limit how much TV young kids watch to less than two hours a day. Until the advent of the new medications, people diagnosed with schizophrenia occupied one half of the hospital beds in the United States. One out of every 10,000 people come down with schizophrenia, and 750,000 are treated every year. Several million people in the United States currently have had this disorder at one time or another in their lifetime. Although we think of schizophrenia as a mental disorder, the lifetime risk of this illness is the same 
as for diabetes, which of course is an illness that one hears a lot more about and for which there's been a lot more research and treatment development. The peak age of onset is somewhat different for men and women. Men usually begin to have difficulties in their late teens or early 20s, whereas women tend to begin to have this illness in their middle 20s and even into their 30s. In today's lecture, I'm going to talk about changes in air pollution since the middle of the last century and what has created these changes. So, uh, by the 1950s, air pollution was very visible with frequent thick black fogs known as smogs in many large cities around the world. The main source of this pollution was from factories and it caused severe health problems. For example, a particularly severe smog in London in 1952 caused over 4,000 deaths. Obviously, something had to be done. And in 1956, a Clean Air Act was introduced in Britain. This addressed the pollution from factories and the smog soon disappeared. However, as you know, these days air pollution is still a big issue. The main difference between now and the 1950s is that you can't see it. It's invisible. Also, the main source of pollution now is from cars and lorries, and although these don't produce visible signs, this air pollution is still a significant risk to health. And one of the key factors in the rise of this type of pollution is that we have all become much more vehicle dependent. There are far more cars and lorries, trains and planes than in the 1950s, and this is now the main source of air pollution around the world. Thermodynamics, all right, let's start. Thermodynamics is the science of the flow of heat. So thermo is heat, and dynamics is the motion of heat. Thermodynamics was developed uh, largely beginning in the 1800s, at the time of the Industrial Revolution. The taming of, the st of steel, the beginning of generating uh, power by burning fossil fuels. So anyway, thermodynamics dates from the same period as, 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 as getting fossil fuels out of the ground. It's universal. Turns out everything around us moves energy around in one way or the other. If you're a biological system, you're burning calories, burning ATP, you're creating heat, you're a warm-blooded animal, you're, 
You need energy to move your arms around and move around. Mechanical systems, obviously cars, boats, etc. And even in astrophysics, when you talk about stars, black holes, etc., you're moving energy around, you're moving heat around, and you're changing matter through uh, thermodynamics. And the concepts of thermodynamics have even been applied to economics, systems out of equilibrium, like big companies like Enron, you know, completely out of equilibrium, crash and burn, right? It's a, you can apply thermodynamic or non-equilibrium thermodynamics to, to economics. Thirdly, life from non-living matter. And this illustration often used is the one of the monkeys at the typewriter. Okay, so we have a monkey sitting at a typewriter. And the claim here is, basically, if you leave chance and time long enough, you will get life. Don't worry about it. Yes, it's strange. Yes, it's wonderful. But leave enough matter, 600 million years on Earth, and you will have life. So the monkey's sitting at the typewriter, and the chances are, eventually, he produces the complete works of Shakespeare. So what's the problem? So there's no problem, there isn't an issue, right? You just leave him long enough, you'll be fine. And at one keystroke a second, the monkey might well eventually get to the complete works of Shakespeare, but he doesn't manage to do it in 600 million years. So what I decided to do to run the numbers is I, instead of saying type the complete works of Shakespeare, I just ran the numbers for how long would it take a monkey typing at one keystroke a second to type to be or not to be, that is the question, right? On average, how long is it going to take my monkey friend at one keystroke a second I don't know how long you think that would be. Maybe you could have a guess. Would it be less or more than 600 million years, which is the period life on Earth is supposed to have emerged within? And when I ran the numbers, to be or not to be, that is the question, takes 12.6 trillion, 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 trillion years to type just that phrase. And a DNA string, which you have to have for like the life we have now, doesn't emerge in... It's, it's not like a sentence's worth of information. A DNA string has got as much information as the Encyclopedia Britannica. Right? So if we're saying that emerged, something of that complexity emerged by chance, undirected, within 600 million years, again, it's mathematically possible, but it's so incredibly unlikely that it would have that it tilts me in favor of the Christian story in which God creating life is simply a question of saying, let there be, and there was. Joseph Lister was an English surgeon who was the first man to realise the importance of aseptic techniques during surgical procedures. Lister was born in Essex, England, and after obtaining a Bachelor of Arts degree from University College London, he qualified as a doctor in 1852. Lister became assistant surgeon at Edinburgh Royal Infirmary and was later made surgeon at the Glasgow Royal Infirmary in Scotland. 
The accepted belief at the time was that contact of an open wound with moisture in the air caused infection, so surgical wounds were covered after operating with non-sterile cloths, which increased the risk of infection. Lister refused to accept this theory, and after reading the works of Louis Pasteur, he tried to prevent bacterial infection of surgical wounds by applying pure carbolic acid to surgical dressings, as well as cleaning wounds with the acid during and after surgery. Lister studied the effects of his treatment for two years and then published his findings. This led to the adoption of doctors wearing white gowns, which were used to show dirt, and using surgical gauze and carbolic acid to clean wounds after surgery. Lister successfully treated Queen Victoria using his new methods, and he was appointed chairman of clinical surgery at King's College Hospital London, where he continued his research into antiseptics and clean surgery until he retired in 1893, and died in Kent, England, aged 85. The graph shows three types of frogs in different region, indicating their life habits and their influence on human. The variation of frog has been existing for many years that some have more limbs while some have fewer limbs. The lecture also explains the reason for the gene mutation. Many people are worried that river those frogs lived will be polluted by them and affect our health. Frog population changes in North America with different limb, 20 to 30 percent. People would worry such species may affect and post risk to people in the local area cause their drinking water is from the river. Community service is an important component of education here at our university. We encourage all students to volunteer for at least one community activity before they graduate. A new community program called One on One helps elementary students who've fallen behind. You education majors might be especially interested in it because it offers the opportunity to do some teaching, that is, tutoring in math and English. You'd have to volunteer two hours a week for one semester. You can choose to help a child with math, English or both. Half hour lessons are fine, so you could do half hour of each subject, two days a week. Professor Dodge will act as a mentor to these tutors. He'll be available to help you with the lesson plans or to offer suggestions for activities. He has office hours every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. You can sign up for the program with him and begin the tutoring next week. I'm sure you'll enjoy this community service and you'll gain valuable experience at the same time. It looks good on your resume too, showing that you've had experience with children and that you care about your community. If you'd like to sign up or have any questions, stop by Professor Dodger's office this week.
the shuttle was designed to be a space truck. It's a multi-purpose vehicle. We've done a tremendous number of different things with it. It's the most versatile space vehicle that has ever been built. We've used it to launch satellites. We've used it to repair satellites in orbit and put them back into orbit. We've used it to capture satellites and bring them back to Earth for repair. We've outfitted it with the Space Lab built by our European partners and used it before the era of the space station to do scientific research. We used it as part of our partnership with the Russians, which is still continuing, first as part of the Mir space station, where we actually prolonged the useful life of Mir by several years through logistical supply visits with the shuttle. And now, of course, we're using it to build the new International Space Station, which is a, a huge international partnership. This phenomenon of conservation is explained by what we call the first law of thermodynamics, sometimes referred to as the law of energy conservation. The law states energy cannot be created or destroyed. Energy can be described as the ability to do work, where work is the movement of matter when a force is applied to it. A closed system is a system in which no matter or energy is allowed to enter or leave. The first law of thermodynamics tells us that the amount of energy within any closed system is constant. It doesn't change. An open system, on the other hand, allows stuff to come in and go out. Since most systems are not closed, the law of energy conservation can be rephrased to say that the, the change in the internal energy of the system is equal to the difference between the amount of energy coming in minus the amount of energy going out. In other words, the amount of energy in a system can change, but only if it comes from another system or goes to another system. At any rate, systems, whether they're open or closed, do not create or destroy energy. Rather, energy can enter from one system and leave to another. Your body is composed of trillions of cells. Lots of different types of cells that make up different organs and other parts of your body. Your body is also where 10 times that number of bacteria call home sweet home. But don't be afraid, these bacteria do more good than harm to you. And besides, just in case you wanted to strike up a conversation with your tenants, you and your bacteria do have a few things in common. All cells share some common characteristics that make them living things. 
All organisms are composed of cells, the basic fundamental unit of life. They contain DNA as a heritable genetic material, and they can reproduce. They transcribe DNA into RNA and translate RNA into proteins on ribosomes. They can also regulate transport across the cell membrane and require chemical energy for some cellular processes. The number one biggest difference between the bacteria in your body and the cells making up your body are these tiny cellular components called organelles. You've actually learned a lot about organelles in other lessons without knowing it. Organelles are simply membrane-bound compartments within a cell, such as the nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplasts, Golgi, and endoplasmic reticulum. You are a eukaryote. Your cells are eukaryotic. Eukaryotic cells contain membrane-bound organelles, including a nucleus. Eukaryotes can be single-celled or multi-celled, such as you, me, plants, fungi, and insects. It is wrong, however, to exaggerate the similarity between language and other cognitive skills, because language stands apart in several ways. For one thing, the use of language is universal. All normally developing children learn to speak at least one language, and many learn more than one. By contrast, not everyone becomes proficient at complex mathematical reasoning, few people learn to paint well and many people cannot carry a tune. Because everyone is capable of learning to speak and understand language, it may seem to be simple, but just the opposite is true language is one of the most complex of all human cognitive abilities. Few different types of psychotic symptoms, which we will review individually. Hallucinations are hearing, seeing, feeling, tasting, or smelling something that isn't really there. This sensation has no external stimuli. Due to a lack of insight, these individuals think that what they perceive is real. Schizophrenia is usually associated with auditory hallucinations, where the individual hears voices. Tactile hallucinations, like the sensation of bugs crawling on their skin, is usually related to street drugs. Olfactory or smell hallucinations are more commonly seen in the aura before seizures. Delusions are strongly held beliefs that are not based on fact. Due to the lack of insight, trying to convince a psychotic person that their delusions are false is almost impossible, no matter how much evidence you present. Delusions of persecution are the most common type and involve paranoia. These individuals think others are out to get them 
and are trying to follow them, spy on them, poison them, steal from them, or otherwise harm them. Delusions of grandeur are when an individual believes they have special powers, talents, or intellect. They may think they are famous, have supernatural abilities, or have religious prominence. Other common themes in delusion are guilt, thought control, thought broadcasting, or the belief that others can hear your thoughts, and ideas of reference, belief that people on TV, radio, print media are talking about you. Here are three important factors in creativity, people, process, and product. The most important one is the process. First, you have to create the right person through education with a creative mind. Second, you have to create the right process to have people engaged in innovation process. Third, you need to find the right problem to work on. Human beings can survive and prosper largely depending on the creativity they have. If you can identify and assess the creativity of a finished product, it is taken as a proxy for the creativity of the person who produced such a product. Therefore, a creative product should be surprising, original, beautiful, and useful. People should have factors necessary for genius, ability, and right mindset. You should improve to imitate and change inside look from news perspective innovatively create something with imagination to expand conceptual spaces. Thank you.